On today's episode of Watch Chargo, we're going to buy, I hope, a 1998 Suzuki Sidekick Sport. What is going on guys? I'm Watch Jay Ergo, and today I'm here with Josh. We've got our liquid ice again. I ran out for a minute there. I'm so happy to be back with my liquid ice white. We've got our breakfast burritos. So uh, it's firing on all cylinders here. And we are headed across Wichita to pick up this, open it up here, 1998 Suzuki Sidekick Sport. It's so cool, $2,300. It's a JLX SUV. This is like the ultimate luxury edition of my Geo Tracker. So. Let's go check it out. Here we are. What's going on, man? Nothing much, how you doing? Not bad, John Ross. Nice to meet you. So this is a... 98 Suzuki Sidekick. Awesome. It looks cool, it looks like... I mean, it looks wide with the fender flares and everything. Oh, yeah. I like it. Well, can I go check it out? Yep. All right, here we go. Start this bad boy up. Same gauge cluster as mine. Seems like it runs pretty well. This is a car Doug DeMuro has never reviewed, I think. Anyway, you guys just saw me buy my new 1998 Suzuki Sidekick Sport JLX for only $1,900. And I'm pretty excited about this because it seems to be extremely, extremely, extremely rare. I found two for sale on Craigslist in the entire US, did a quick auto tempest search, and one was like $5,000 and one was $3,800, which easily gives me the title of cheapest in the USA. However, after I looked into this car more and more and more, I do think it might be a JX, because JLXs should have auto lockers, and this one clearly has manual lockers up front. So, maybe my leather seats and everything were added, because this has every single feature that a JLX would have. Kind of odd. We're gonna keep working on the assumption that it's a JLX because that's what the seller told me. Who knows what happened to the front axle and it has all the other stuff I would expect the JLX to have. Before we get too far into this sidekick, I have my other sidekick in my pocket. And uh, of course this goes everywhere with me and it's wrapped in the new Slick Wraps X-ray skin, which is really cool. You remember the old Nokias that we all carried around and we all had clear cases on them so you could see the inside? It's just like this skin and I love it. So Slick Wraps is the sponsor of this video, well the entire series. They're a local wrap company here in Wichita that makes skins for your devices. I mean all kinds of devices, MacBooks, Nintendo Switches, whatever you've got, whatever your kids have, your phone, uh, even your Apple Watch and stuff like that, they make skins for them. So so I'm really happy with this one. It even covers the camera. It's a full wrap, goes all the way around the phone, and it looks really cool. And uh, of course, it's kind of mechanical-ish, so I really like it. But head on over to slickwraps.com, check out some of their device skins, and uh, buy something that works for you. You can even have custom-made ones. Upload your own image, and they'll print it, and you can put it right on your phone. So you can have your own custom one-off Make your own watch chair or go one, do whatever you want. You could even make your own Suzuki Sidekick Sport phone case, which would be really cool. So head on over to slickwraps.com, check them out, and uh, dress up your device. Make it look cool, make it you. So let's go through this thing. First of all, it has tribal tattoos, and I'm not sure why. Maybe we'll take those off. And coming around here, we have these super cool JLX wheels, which I think look a lot better than any of the other Sidekick and Tracker wheels. Uh, this thing is also known as the Geo Tracker, and the Geo Tracker never got this trim. So you can only get this insane hard top five door trim in the Suzuki Sidekick. And of course, it is the sport because it's faster. That's probably not true. But it has 120 horsepower that it cranks out of this 1.8 liter dual overhead cam engine. Let's open the engine bay real quick. Good prop up here. This is the 1.8 in all of its glory. And I'm very excited about it because mine doesn't have OBD2. This one was federally mandated to have OBD2. It has coil on plug, which is so much better than distributors and so much easier to troubleshoot. I love that. It looks like uh, we have a new PCV valve in there. And the battery looks, I mean, sort of recent. It's, it's getting a little agey there, but looks recent enough. And uh, New Deco belt, it looks like, on the accessories, no cracks. Uh, radiator looks new, so that's pretty cool. And uh, I mean, other than that, it's relatively clean. It just needs a good engine bay cleaning. I need to grab some degreaser and a brush and get in here and just 
clean this whole thing up really well. And this power plant is connected to a four speed automatic transmission. And after that, we have the transfer case for the four wheel drive, which is really cool. Manual transfer case, two high, four high, four low, and uh, you know, everything you'd expect out of a really capable four wheel drive vehicle. Actually, probably too capable for what these things are. These 16 inch street tires don't really do any favors for this thing off road, but it's really smooth on road and they're basically new. We've got tons of tread depth. I'm, I'm very impressed with how good this car is for $1,900. I've been driving it around a little bit and I drove it here in the rain. It has beam blades on it and they work great. And the wiper sprayers work great. Like I really haven't found anything on this thing that doesn't work yet. And that's kind of impressive. The seats are in pretty good shape. They're pretty comfy. The door panels seem to be pulling back because they're wrapped in like a vinyl or a leather-ish, like, you know, a leatherette material there. No power seats or anything cool like that because it's still a sidekick. So, you know, they had to keep all the weight out of this thing. Take a look at that massive back seat though. That's like African safari level back there where you can really stretch out and relax and you sit high so you can see everything. Visibility out of this car when you're driving it is unbelievable. So the seller did say that there was something wrong with the latch on the back door. And I don't know if it's locked or if it's stuck, but there's also a bungee cord holding it shut right now. So we're gonna leave that alone until I have a chance to dig into it a little bit. The Sport is wide bodied and the wide body looks incredible. This thing has such a cool stance. It's low to the ground, uh, you know, unlike most trackers which get lifted immediately and there is a five inch lift kit. I've been looking at it, but I think I'm gonna leave this alone because of its rarity. Uh, the wide body and just the stance of the entire thing looks perfect. I just think it looks amazing going down the road. Coming in the driver's side, we can see you have your uh, door locks. This is the window lock. And then you only have the front two window controls. Coming on in here, it has electric mirrors, which are pretty cool. Screw defrost, there's a gauge dimmer. All that stuff's normal out of a tracker. We have a head unit, a sound stream head unit with Bluetooth and DVD player and all that fun stuff. It's kind of odd that you have those rear window switches. And then back here, you have those rear window switches. I don't, why couldn't the passenger just reach up there? There's the rear ashtray. I guess I can put that back together real fast. We can start fixing this thing right now. Oh, that's much better. We have a power sunroof, which is absolutely crazy to see in a sidekick, I think. And uh, it's one of the JLX features. So pretty happy that that's there. Horn works too. <laughs> Now that we've been over all seven of the features in the Suzuki Sidekick Sport and the one quirk, which is the, uh, of course, the hood opening being in the glove box, uh, let's go drive the thing. It's time for some driving impressions. First off, it feels almost exactly like the Geo Tracker. And of course, my Geo Tracker is wildly different. It's a uh, two door, way smaller, way lighter, soft top. You know, that takes out a ton of weight all by itself. And of course, my Tracker has huge wheels and tires and snow tires, studded snow tires on the back. This is on street tires. Somehow it really does still feel the same. I've never had this wide open throttle, but we're gonna try it out right now. We're gonna see how well the 139,000 mile four cylinder engine holds up wide open throttle. It's floored. Woo! What a beast, 35 mile an hour. <laughs> uh, you should see how slow this is. It's, uh, it's acceptable, honestly. If you had to merge in the traffic quickly, we're now doing the speed limit. It's doing 60. It didn't take that long, but as soon as this wind hit, the thing was like, come on, fight me. So uh, the wind can really push this thing around, which is funny because, you know, it's lightweight, uh, small suspension, all, you know, it was all cheap components, but very capable. And it all held up well because it was all sized correctly. It's a, it's a well-engineered vehicle, honestly. That's why all the off-roaders love these things and they can go anywhere. It's a great car. We're gonna mosey through a few corners here just to kind of see what it's like when you have to actually corner with a, a small brick that looks really, really good. And the body roll isn't unacceptable, I'd say. Uh, I've definitely seen worse. I don't know, Econoline vans tip over a little better, but uh, it's, it's not bad. As long as you drive, uh, you know, kind of expecting there to be a little body roll, totally fine. You know, you kind of preload into the corner add a little throttle and it just kind of sets right where you want and it's manageable. Honestly, the seats feel great. It's really quiet inside, which is a huge benefit over the soft top. The visibility is truly unlimited. I can literally see anything. The soft tops, you cannot look out all over. It's kind of like adding a giant blind spot because you can't really see out of the plastic windows and stuff like that generally. Uh, you're just kind of hoping for kind of a picture through the back one. I love this. It's so much better than my soft top two door. 
this thing, it's a lot more fun, hit some bumps, it just steamrolls right over them. And, you know, it's, it's not exactly subtle that you're steamrolling over bumps. It's not like, a, you know, any luxury car, but it gets it done, it feels fine. Now, if we just had a place to go try out the four wheel drive. Put in four high, oh, we gotta stop. Can't just toss it in, can you? Okay. I didn't feel the front wheels pick up. I hope they work. Ooh, this is a muddy mess. <laughs> oh, we're going for it. Oh, girl, do not get stuck back here. <laughs> oh, that's not good. It's pretty funny that this is flat ground, but it's also pretty serious off-roading with all this mud. I better pick up some speed because we have to go through some water. Here we go. <laughs> I can't see! <laughs> well, I think the four-wheel drive worked great. Even in the mud, it never slowed down. Let's go back into too high here. Manual four-wheel drive is awesome. That was so good. You also forget what it's like to drive a vehicle with zero sound deadening covered in mud. <laughs> it's so loud, there's just rocks and mud flying everywhere. Time to demud this thing. Once again, huge shout out to Slick Wraps for sponsoring this video. Hit the link in the description below. Get a skin on your iPhone, on your Samsung Galaxy, whatever it is you're rocking, check them out. They'll have something that you like. And that is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'm gonna go enjoy this sidekick a little bit more. And please, like, share, subscribe. Do whatever you want to do, and I will talk to you next time. Oh no, burger down. Burger down. Burger down.